Hey guys, it's Adrian here, the Canadian in a t-shirt. And today I'll be breaking down the basics of REITs and how to invest in real estate through the stock market. REITs are an amazing tool to tap into the real estate market even if you don't have a lot of money. And it gives you pure passive income, usually through monthly dividends. In this video, I'll go over how REITs work, the advantages of REITs over traditional real estate investing, the different types of REITs, how their passive income is taxed, and different REIT investing strategies, especially for Canadians. This is chapter eight of my Millennial Investing Guide. So click the pop-up at the top right to check out the previous videos in that playlist to learn about the basics of investing and dividends, what are stocks, bonds, and ETFs, and how to invest during a market crash. So what is a REIT? A REIT is a real estate investment trust. It is a large company that owns hundreds or thousands of real estate properties and rents them out for a profit. It's basically a way for everyday people to tap into the real estate market, even if you don't have the money for a down payment. Instead of saving up for years to buy one property, you could buy shares of a REIT the same way you buy shares of a stock. And now you are a part owner of hundreds of properties. And so you get a portion of the monthly rent collected on all of those properties. Real estate investing is one of the best ways to build wealth because land itself is limited and people will always need a place to live and work. There is a finite amount of land available, especially in the big cities. And as populations grow, the demand goes up and thus the value of this real estate increases. But only the owner benefits from this increased value. The rest of us are paying the owner every month through rent. But it's very expensive to buy property. Sure, you can partner up with a few people and split it evenly. That makes it easier, but what if we took it one step further? What if we split these properties with thousands of people? That's what the US government did when they created the REIT. This real estate investment trust allowed thousands of everyday people to pool their money together to buy real estate. And you didn't have to meet each other and sign contracts and partnerships. You just bought shares of a REIT on the stock market. So if you buy a share of a REIT, you own a small part of that company. And so you own a small part of all of the real estate properties held by that REIT. Even better, you're entitled to a portion of their profits gained through rent. So now, even if you only have $20, you can start investing in real estate properties. That's a game changer. So why should you invest in REITs? Their two biggest benefits are access to the real estate market and passive income. Let's break it down. REITs are an affordable and accessible alternative to physically owning real estate. You can purchase a single share of a REIT for less than $20, but buying physical real estate is exceedingly more difficult and expensive. You need a large amount of money upfront to buy property. In Canada, you need to make a down payment of at least 20% of the property value for rentals. So if you're buying a house to rent and the house is selling for $500,000, you must have $100,000 in cash if you wanna buy it. Even if you qualify for a larger mortgage, you need 20% of the purchase price upfront in cash. If you don't have it, too bad, you'll have to save up. But with REITs, you just invest as much as you can. You just buy the shares of the REIT and you could do it instantly through an online broker like Questrade. You don't have to meet with lawyers, you don't have to sign any paperwork, you just buy the shares on the stock market with a click of a button. Buying a physical property is a long process. You have to inspect the property, meet with lawyers and real estate agents, you have to get approved for a mortgage, and all of this comes with extra fees. And that's just to become an owner. To actually earn money as a landlord, you have to find tenants to rent out to. This takes time and money to advertise, interview, and screen the tenants. And once they move in, you have to deal with maintenance, repairs, and renovations. You'll be getting calls any time of day to deal with plumbing issues, late rent payments, and worst of all, tenant evictions. Being a landlord is definitely not passive income. It takes a lot of time and effort, but you do have a high level of control. You own the property and you make all the decisions. You can choose your tenants and you can decide how to deal with repairs if you wanna hire someone or do it yourself. With REIT investing, you give up this control, but it is purely passive income. The REIT, the company itself, owns and operates the rental properties. They have hundreds of employees and contractors to find tenants and deal with maintenance. You're not involved and you don't have a say in the matter. But if you own shares of a REIT, you are a part owner. And so you get a portion of the monthly rent and you don't have to do a thing. You just sit back, collect those dividends and make money in your sleep. Another advantage of REITs is liquidity. Buying a rental property is a huge commitment. If something goes wrong and you need your money back, you can't just cash out. Selling a property takes weeks or months and it comes with huge costs, usually about 6% of the selling price. Plus, it's all or nothing. You can't sell half of a house. But with REITs, you have the freedom to sell as many shares as you want. If you need $10,000 back, just sell $10,000 worth of shares. You don't have to sell the whole thing. And you get this money instantly. 
And if you use an online broker like Questrade, it will literally cost you only $5 in commission fees to sell these shares. Another great benefit of REITs is the inherent diversification. When you buy a rental property, you're making a huge commitment. You're basically putting all your eggs in one basket. You've spent years saving up for this down payment and you've poured all this money into this property, but you could lose it all. Even if it's a perfect property, there could always be a flood, a fire, destructive tenants, and these will disrupt your income and hurt your investment. With REITs, however, your investment is spread out over hundreds of properties, so you take on far less risk. This inherent diversification is the exact same benefit of owning ETFs rather than individual stocks. I talk about this in detail in my ETF video, so click the pop-up at the top right to check that out. You can think of REITs like an ETF of real estate. Instead of putting all your money into one stock or one property, you can buy a REIT and diversify across hundreds of properties. Even if one property tanks in value, your REIT as a whole will still be okay, and so will your investment. I'm not saying that REITs are always better than owning real estate directly. You should try to invest in both approaches, and that's what I do. I own a rental property and I'm looking to buy another one in the next few years, but I also invest heavily in REITs. I'll be breaking down the pros and cons in further detail between REITs and physical real estate in an upcoming video. And I'll be making more videos on how to get started in real estate investing, so stay tuned for that. The main investing strategy of REITs is to generate steady, passive income through dividends. In fact, REITs generally pay higher dividend yields than regular stocks, and in a lot of cases, these dividends are paid out every month. This is because the income that REITs earn comes from the rent paid by their tenants. This rent is paid out every month, and so most REITs pay out their dividends every month as well. In the US, the government actually requires REITs to pay out at least 90% of their taxable income to shareholders through dividends. If they do this, then REITs don't have to pay any corporate taxes on their earnings. That's why REITs pay such strong and reliable dividends. They want to maintain this special tax treatment even during hard times. In Canada, the government doesn't force this 90% dividend payout, but it's still in the REIT's best interest to pay out the majority of their taxable income to shareholders to reduce their corporate tax bill. In this way, the tax on the rental income gets passed down to the shareholders. REITs pay out the majority of their earnings to shareholders who are happy to earn that strong passive income, but that doesn't leave a lot of money inside the REIT to grow as a company, so don't expect too much capital appreciation with REITs. Sure, the underlying properties inside the REIT will likely increase in value over time, and that might cause the share price to go up. But the main benefit of REIT investing is the passive income earned through dividends. Any capital gains you get is just a bonus. I'll talk more about REIT strategies and the taxation rules later in the video, but now let's talk about the different types of REITs. There are two fundamental types of REITs, mortgage REITs and equity REITs. Mortgage REITs are far less common, and they don't actually own property. Mortgage REITs invest in mortgages and mortgage-backed securities and they make their money from the interest paid on these loans. Because of this, mortgage REITs are very dependent on interest rates. Equity REITs are much more popular than mortgage REITs. When most people, including myself, say REITs, they're almost always talking about equity REITs. Equity REITs are the companies that actually own and operate real estate properties, and they earn their income through rent. Equity REITs usually focus on one or two real estate sectors. Residential REITs own houses, condos, and apartments, and rent them out to people to live in, usually with year-long leases. Commercial REITs rent out to businesses, and usually with longer leases of five to 10 years. This includes retail REITs, which own shopping malls and plazas, usually anchored by a grocery store or a big chain like Walmart. There's also industrial REITs, which own factories, warehouses, and distribution centers. Then there's more specialized REITs, like office REITs, hotel REITs, and healthcare REITs, which own medical buildings and retirement homes. With any type of investment, it's important to diversify across multiple sectors. Again, don't put all your eggs in one basket. You wanna get exposure to all sectors of real estate. You can do that by owning different types of REITs or by investing in REIT ETFs, which are a collection of REITs bundled together. Click the pop-up at the top right to check out my stock picks recommendation playlist, where I go over some of my favorite REITs and ETFs that I personally invest in. I'll also be making a whole video dedicated to my favorite Canadian REITs for passive income, so stay tuned for that. REITs are an excellent source of passive income, but how should you invest in them? Like any high yield dividend stock, you should hold them in your tax sheltered accounts, mainly your TFSA and RRSP. I've gone into detail on the tax advantages of this in my past tax videos, so click the pop-up at the top right to check those out. Holding high yield dividends in your TFSA and RRSP maximizes your tax efficiency, but this is especially important when it comes to REITs. And that's because in Canada, REITs don't pay regular dividends, they pay distributions and distributions are taxed heavier than regular dividends. And that's because of the corporate tax benefits that REITs receive. 
When a regular company earns income, they pay corporate taxes on that. With the remaining after-tax money, they can pay out dividends. And now the shareholders will have to pay taxes on the dividends that they receive. But now, those dividends have been taxed twice. The company has already paid corporate taxes on that income, and now the investor has paid personal taxes on that dividend. To avoid this double taxation, the government offers a dividend tax credit to the investors to reduce their tax bill. Because of this tax credit, income earned through eligible dividends are taxed far more favorably than regular income you earn at a job. Unfortunately, distributions paid by REITs are not considered eligible dividends, and so they don't get this dividend tax credit. Remember, REITs as a company avoid paying corporate taxes by paying out the majority of their income out to investors. Since the company never paid taxes on this income, there's no double taxation, and so you don't get that tax credit. The income you earn from REITs will basically be taxed at your full marginal tax rate. That's why it's best to hold your REITs in your TFSA and RRSP to avoid this tax bill. In Canada, REIT taxation actually gets even more complicated. The distribution that you receive mostly comes from rental income, but it also contains capital gains that the company earned when they sold properties. And these are taxed differently in your hands. You can see the breakdown of the distribution that you receive on the REIT's website. To make it worse, the distribution you receive could also contain a return of capital. I don't want to get into those details right now, I'll save that for a future video. But if the distribution you receive contains a return of capital, you don't pay any taxes on that amount right now, but it will increase the taxes you do pay when you finally sell your shares. The real challenge is that you have to keep track of these adjustments to your cost base every single year until you finally sell. It can be a huge headache, and that's why I suggest to hold your REITs in a tax-sheltered account to avoid all of this. If you hold your REITs in a TFSA or an RRSP, you won't be taxed on this income. That saves you a ton of money, plus you don't have to keep track of these details. You can just sit back, collect that monthly income, and watch your investments grow tax-free. One final note on taxes. Remember, U.S. dividends, including from U.S. REITs, are subject to a 15% U.S. withholding tax unless you hold them in your RRSP. I've talked about this in detail in my past tax videos, but here's the bottom line. Your Canadian REITs should be held in your TFSA and RESP accounts. Your US REITs should only be held in your RRSP account to avoid this withholding tax. If you follow this rule, you won't pay any taxes on your investment income from REITs. I'm going to be making a whole video on how to research and evaluate stocks before you choose to invest in them. But when it comes to REITs, there are a few special metrics to look at. One of the most important numbers to evaluate any stock is its earnings or net income. It's very simple, just their revenue minus their expenses. Are they gaining money or are they losing money? When it comes to REITs, however, this doesn't tell the whole story, and that's because of depreciation. Remember, a REIT wants to minimize their taxable income so that they won't pay any corporate taxes. They reduce their taxable income by claiming depreciation on their properties. They can claim that their properties are decreasing in value by let's say 3% every year, and they can deduct this amount from their taxable income. But this depreciation isn't real. In reality, real estate properties are generally increasing in value year after year. So a better metric to evaluate a REIT's cash flow is the FFO, funds from operations. To get the FFO, they basically add the depreciation back into the net income equation. This is definitely a simplification, and I'll be making a whole video on how to evaluate stocks and REITs in an upcoming video. But overall, when you're comparing two different REITs, don't focus on their earnings. The FFO is a much better representation of their cash flow when it comes to REITs. If you'd like to get started with investing in REITs, I recommend Questrade, which is my favorite online broker. And if you click my referral link in the box below, you'll get $50 in commission-free trade rebates for the first 30 days when you sign up. That basically means that your first 10 stock trades will be commission-free. That saves you $50, plus I'll get a small referral bonus as well. If you'd like to see exactly which REITs I'm invested in and to help support my channel, hit that join button down below to gain access to my exclusive videos like my TFSA portfolio reveal and to see which stocks I'm buying every week. But remember, don't just blindly follow a random guy on YouTube. Everyone has their own financial goals and circumstances. It's your money, so make your own decisions. Don't just copy what I do, but I hope that seeing my portfolio might offer some guidance, especially if you're just getting started. So there you have it. That's everything you need to know about REITs. REITs are a great way to tap into the real estate market, even if you don't have a lot of money, and they are a fantastic source of passive income. REITs own and manage hundreds of real estate properties, and they pay you from the rent they earn. It's important to diversify across multiple types of real estate, including retail, industrial, office, and residential REITs. REIT distributions are taxed more heavily than regular dividends, so make sure you hold your REITs in your TFSA or RRSP to avoid these taxes. And when evaluating REITs, focus on the FFO, funds from operations, instead of the earnings. 
Thanks for watching guys, and be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you found this video helpful. Every thumbs up and comment really does help me build this channel on YouTube, and hit that bell icon to be notified of my new videos every week. And if you'd like to follow me on Instagram or Facebook, at Canadian T-shirt, click the links in the box below, or click the links on my homepage. Be sure to tune into my next video on how to transfer money and stocks into Quest Trade from another bank, especially with your TFSA or RRSP accounts. Thanks everyone, and I'll see you guys on the next episode of the Canadian in a T-shirt. Bye guys.